today I'm going to be walking you through all the steps and materials that I use to make this right here. Um, I embroidered the roses and the leaves. This was a really easy and relatively inexpensive project. The only thing I paid for was the sweater itself um, and the rest of the stuff I happened to have laying around my house um, or I borrowed from a friend. This was also a really easy project. It took me less than a day um, and it was throughout like watching TV and doing other things at the same time. If you happen to follow this video, let me know if you have any questions and leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to help you and answer them. If you ended up making the sweater too, let me know how it turned out. And last but not least, if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more. Alright Ben, let's get started! So obviously you don't need to use the exact sweater I used, but the one that I did use I found on Urban Outfitters. I got mine in a size small in the color lavender, and right now it says it's $70, but I believe I got mine for 30% off, so it was around $50. So you can use any article of clothing you find as long as the material is mostly cotton or polyester it should work. So the key is to just look for any fabric that doesn't leave behind remnants when you stab it with a needle. So if you look closely the fabric isn't woven really tightly together that way when I do stab it with a needle it goes through it really easily and it's not noticeable when the needle exits the fabric. So this is another hoodie that I had laying around that was also mostly made of cotton. So when I stabbed the needle through it, it didn't show as well. Ideally, this is the type of fabric that you want to use, just because it's easier to get the needle through it, and if you do mess up and you need to take apart your embroidery. So the materials that you will use for sure include a needle and some string. Some optional items are an embroidery hoop and embroidery string. So the embroidery hoop is optional because even though it does help and it makes the process easier, it's just convenient, but it's not necessary, especially in the elbow area and the sleeves because there's really no way to use the hoop. So the only place that I used the hoop was on the front and on the shoulder. Here I'm kind of just showing how to use the embroidery hoop. You basically just stick it under the fabric and then clip the outer layer over it and you screw it on so it's tight and it forces the fabric to stay in place and you can kind of just hold the hoop and go through it. And it, makes, it does make the process a lot easier, but I personally didn't use it that much and I definitely think you can do this project without it. Another thing that's optional is embroidery floss. So I just used leftover string that I had from in middle school when I made friendship bracelets. It worked really well and I ended up using that just because I didn't really have enough embroidery floss for the entire sweater. But I did have enough friendship bracelet string so I decided to stick with that. But the main difference between real embroidery floss and just right just any other string is that embroidery floss as you can see here is really easy to take apart so that way if you wanted to have like thinner lines or if you wanted it to be more delicate then you would probably just use maybe three three strings or two strings or maybe even one but Personally, I like the thicker look, which is why it didn't really matter to me because even if I had embroidery floss, I probably just would have ended up using all six strings. The last item that is optional is an erasable pen. This is also really handy so you can map out where exactly you want your pattern and how big you want it to be, but it's optional because you could also use something that's waxy like a crayon or a pastel and that would probably brush off the fabric as well.
Before I went ahead and embroidered, I sketched out on paper what I wanted my design to look like because I'm extra <laughs> and I just wanted to have a clear pattern and clear idea of what I was doing before I actually did it on the sweater. So I drew my design on paper first. I used the erasable pen to map out the designs on my sweater. Definitely should have tracked that it would come off before doing it directly on the hoodie. I stupidly didn't track, but I just assumed that if it erased on paper, it would erase on my sweater as well. And only after drawing it on did I freak out and go on the internet to search how exactly this pen worked and henceforth why you get this clip. Build by the science guy. Science rules. So, there are three chemicals present in the erasable pen. Chemical A is a color dye. Chemical B is the compound that causes the color in chemical A to show up. And chemical C is a compound that is temperature activated. So, basically, when chemical A is bonded to chemical B, you get color and the black ink shows up. But in temperatures above 60 to 65 degrees Celsius, chemical C inhibits chemical A and B from bonding. So the dye in chemical A doesn't show up, which is why the color disappears. So what this means is that me stupidly rubbing the fabric isn't actually doing anything. And what's really making the color go away is the temperature from the hairdryer. I believe you can also use an iron as well. It'll probably work better because you just need to get the fabric above a certain temperature and then the ink will disappear. So thank god the color erased because not sure what I would have done then. <laughs> So another thing that I don't know if I mentioned is that this was my first time embroidering and I did not practice on another piece of fabric before starting on this $50 sweater. So I definitely recommend practicing on a less expensive fabric beforehand in case you mess up, but um, I figured since I had prior sewing experience, it would be about the same. Um, it was not the same, but it was similar enough that I didn't mess up and this sweater turned out okay, but I would definitely recommend practicing first if you don't have that much experience with a needle. So for the leaf, I used this embroidery technique called a fishbone stitch, where you essentially start at the top of the leaf, and then you keep looping over from side to side over the middle line, alternating sides obviously. So this is why the erasable pen is really handy, because it's really important that you draw out where exactly you want the outside of your leaf to be. And also, it's also important that you draw out the middle, that, that way you know exactly where you're looping over. If this video doesn't show clearly enough, I'll put other links in the description box that might explain it better. For the roses, I first drew circles for the design, just so I could get a general idea of how big and where I wanted the roses to be. Now, I also split the circle into five separate sections. This is important because for the rose, you use this embroidery technique called a woven wheel stitch, where you stitch out five lines um, in the circle and you essentially just weave um, under and over the five lines that you drew until you get to the outer edge of the circle and then you have your rose. I'll also link the videos I used to learn the woven wheel stitch in the description box.